your molecular model kit will have different colored blocks as well as these pegs in two different styles. Your curved pegs may well be blue. That's fine. Each color block represents a different element. So the hydrogen are the white spheres, carbon is black, oxygen is red, nitrogen blue, and chlorine green. These straight pegs are used for what are called single bonds and the curved pegs are used for double bonds. Today you won't need the double bonds so just use all straight pegs. We'll use the double bonds tomorrow. To build a molecule you use the pegs to connect blocks together. So for example I've connected a carbon to an oxygen. Your dot structures and line structures will tell you where to put the bonds. So I'll show you this example here. Here I need four atoms, two oxygens, two hydrogens, and the bonds are clearly shown. So I take a hydrogen and an oxygen and stick them together and that's the HO part right there. Then I stick another oxygen on. You'll see very soon that I can't make the model look like the picture. The model is the truth, the real shape of the molecule. The flat picture on paper is not true, so trust your model. I need to make a bond now between this O and an H, between this O and an H. There we go. So this is a much more interesting structure than the flat square thing that I drew on paper. This is, uh, chemists love molecular models. They find that molecules have personalities. Some look like dogs and rockets and interesting things like that. So what you do in this last box is you draw what you see here. I see an H. I see a line to an O and then a bent line to another O. It's not straight. And then I see another H. So when it says with proper geometry it's saying look at the angles in the model and draw what you see there. This is the structure of the NH3 molecule. It's ammonia found in cleaning products in your home. It's not flat. You can see I can put a pencil underneath without touching this central atom. So this is a structure that's called a pyramid and we need to show its three-dimensionality on the two-dimensional paper. Chemists have developed a convention for showing three-dimensionality. We need to get out of the plane of the paper to do that. So I'm going to look at this molecule from this angle here and I'm going to choose the plane of the paper to be right here including these two atoms. So here's my ruler and I'm going to line it up with the these two atoms here, this hydrogen and this nitrogen and imagine cutting through the molecule just like that as if it were a knife. If I do that I'm hoping you see this hydrogen will be cl closer to me. It's not in the plane of the paper it's closer to me. And there's one that's behind the plane, behind the cleaver. So this is how you draw that on paper. So here's a nitrogen put a nitrogen. This hydrogen that's in my left hand is in the same plane of the paper. So I just draw a hydrogen with a normal bond straight line between them. This hydrogen is up out of the plane of the paper. I use a wedge usually shaded to represent something 
to represent an atom that's up out of the plane of the paper. The last hydrogen goes back behind. If this right here is the plane of the paper, then this hydrogen here is behind the plane. Behind the plane. To represent that, I do a dashed line that recedes into the distance. And there it is. There's three hydrogens. One in the same plane, one out of the plane, one behind the plane. To a chemist, this picture here represents a three-dimensional structure that looks like this here. It's a pyramid. It's three feet on the bottom and the nitrogen on the top. Number four, methane comes up with this model and this is the most famous shape in chemistry. It's called a tetrahedron. The tetrahedron is really nice symmetry. Uh, you can see from the shadows on my paper it's really cool. Uh, so I'll show you how to draw this shape. First I'm deconstructing taking out two of the atoms, doesn't matter which two but then you'll be left with something that's quite simple. It looks bent. And since it has only three atoms, this is coplanar. It's flat. I can draw on the paper what I see in the model. So for me that means carbon right here, hydrogen up, hydrogen at an angle. It's not 90 degrees. Don't draw it square. It isn't square. Match the angles in the model. Now, here's a third hydrogen. I'm hoping you see this is up out of the plane, and therefore I'll use the same technology I did before. A wedge will represent an atom up out of the plane. Where do I draw it? Uh, if you had an imaginary angle bisector, this atom is right on the line or right on the plane that bisects this angle, cuts it in half. So I go here, I cut this angle in half, here's my wedge, and here's a hydrogen. So that's three out of four of the hydrogens. The fourth hydrogen does go in the back. So if this so if this is the plane of the paper, that hydrogen is behind the plane. So again, I use the dashed line to represent that hydrogen behind the plane. In reality, it's right behind the first hydrogen. It's right behind it. You... So I won't draw it so it's invisible, but I will draw it here. So it's pretty close on the paper to this other hydrogen here. These two are on the paper close together because one's right behind the other. As you can see, the true picture looks nothing like this flat square thing here. The true picture is beautiful. Learn how to draw a tetrahedron. So now you should have enough skill to use various models to do the last three, five, six, and seven. For this part, you're going to use your model kit to make a 3D model. Here's the kit key, and here's the key on the name of the geometry of the shape. You're going to insert a picture of the model that you built here, and then you're going to do a 3D representation of that model here. Same thing for the first part, delete the excess of things that you don't use. If you build a molecule where the pieces are not in the plane, you cannot lay them flat, you'll need to use these wedges and dashes. A wedge is this black wedge. It comes out towards you. The dash lines go back away from you. So you'll have to look at the molecule and determine what's going out and what's going back. After you've done your 3D drawing, please try and name 
some of the geometry that is in the drawing. You can only name geometry when there is a central atom with two or more bonds. So for instance, this oxygen has a bent shape. You can see it's the same as this. And this oxygen also has a bent shape. You're only going to do the shapes of the central atoms, not the side ones. So we're not going to call H and O linear. There needs to be, like in this drawing, at least three atoms to have a shape. So you'll just put that down below. You'll do that for each of your molecules. Lastly, there are some challenge problems for you to do at the bottom.